Good morning, everyone, and welcome as we uh, gather for Sunday worship uh, this uh, rainy April 19th. And it, it reminds me of the saying that April showers bring May flowers. And uh, that is an encouragement to many of us because of the of some things, uh, many things that have been ch uh, changed in the last little while. And yet, uh, April showers, it's a little bit different than the April flurries that we've had a little sometime uh, this past week. So I'm encouraged by the April showers myself. Even though it's a little bit darker outside, I know that there are brighter days ahead. So as we gather for worship this morning, uh, I invite us to take a moment, prepare our hearts, uh, our minds to receive uh, God's gift for us today and to also remind us that even on a dark day like today, uh, Christ's light is shining for each of us uh, to experience in our lives, in the, in the joys that we have around us. Uh, and I encourage us, even in these tough times, to continue to, to look for, for all the joys around us, whether it's just a phone call from a friend, uh, whether it's seeing the flowers come out and bloom. I know uh, my family, we have uh, bird feeders out front and just watching the birds uh, eat. Uh, sometimes they're playing, sometimes the squirrels are involved, so it's, it makes for an interesting uh, of, uh, watching people. So it's uh, interesting to see all that they have to, have to do and have to say each and every day. So I invite us to uh, let's take a moment and prepare our hearts for worship. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we gather this morning, be with us. Lord, there are many different things going on in each of our lives. And at times we do struggle. But we know that your light is lighting the path ahead of us. And that you are guiding us each and every day. Lord, free our hearts and our minds to receive the gift of grace that you have for us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now that we are through uh, uh, Easter and Lent, um, we are back to our responsive call to worship, uh, coming from directly from the scriptures, and our, our responsive call to worship this morning comes from Psalm 91. I invite us to uh, join together as we uh, read through the psalm. I will lead, and if you and if you want to join in when it has uh, the A for everyone. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. For he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions, and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and a buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High, who is my refuge, no evil shall be allowed to befall you, no plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your feet against the stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent. You will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. 
I invite us to join together as we uh, sing together, reminding ourselves of God's uh, great faithfulness. And uh, this, the, this hymn it, uh, has its roots in uh, the book of Lamentations, uh, chapter 3, uh, verses uh, verse tw- uh, Verse uh, 23, uh, 24, 25, uh, in that area, we have direct quotes from uh, that particular scripture in here. Uh, So it is a hymn of of the faith. It is a hymn that reminds us of God's continued faithfulness, even in these troubled times. So let us join together singing, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, great is 
invite us to come before the Lord in prayer. Let us pray. Lord, during these uncertain times, during, as one person has put it, exceptional times, we do struggle, but we come to you, Lord, the one who is unchanging, the one who, whose life we draw strength from. Lord, as we, as we journey through these times, we find rest and peace with you. Lord, as we, as we think of your faithfulness in our lives and in this world, Lord, we, we struggle to hear the, the psalm, and we, we struggle to, to trust, Lord. But Lord, we know that you, you do watch over. We know, Lord, that you are, are at work in our lives and in this world. We know, Lord, that you are a re our refuge and our strength. But Lord, we also see what is happening in this world. We see faithful people who are struggling with life, who are struggling with anxiety, who are struggling uh, with sickness right now. And we still know that each of us are in your hands. Each of us are in, in your care, Lord. Lord, we may not always know exactly what today will bring, let alone tomorrow. But we trust in your unfailing love. Lord, even in the times of our doubts and our struggles, we know that you are faithful. We know, Lord, that we may not always like the answer that we get for our prayers. The desires of our hearts are not always your will. Lord, help us to tune in to your will. That as we pray in the Lord's Prayer, that your will would be done. Lord, forgive us. Forgive us our doubts. Forgive us our, our struggles. Forgive us, Lord, as we, as we allow fear to overtake us in many ways. As we struggle each day, as we rest on your, us, on your certain faithfulness, help us to not be overwhelmed by the stresses of this time. Help us to not be overwhelmed by the grief that is very prevalent. Lord, help us to walk by faith. Even when we doubt, help us to seek your faithfulness. Help us to seek you and to lay all that we fear before you. And draw strength from you, Lord. We pray all of this in Jesus Christ's name. And we pray as Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. My friends, we are in God's presence. And we remember the work that has been done and that is continuing to be done in many different ways. As we read through the mission moment this morning, it is entitled Earth Day. Lucius knows that when he cares for the earth, he can take better care of his family. Having discovered conservation agriculture, soil care management, and crop diversification through a PWSND uh, supported program, this Haitian farmer now grows a diverse range of food. The legumes, cassava, cabbage, peppers, carrots, beans, potatoes, and bananas help make his family's meals both colorful and nutritious. Excited for his increased ability to provide for his family, Lucius 
saves the profits from selling his vegetables to buy a pig, further improving his family's food security. Reflecting on the support he received from PWSND and other farmers in his community, Lucius said, it is possible to produce better food to be able to feed our families. So this is one way that our gifts to PWSND support small-scale farmers. It helps to prov uh, promote food security. Um, as we're going through uh, the time that we're going through right now with the pandemic, um, people, there, there is fear for, for food. Um, it's start off, we've kind of leveled out, but we have to be careful. Um, we have, we, there is, uh, our supply chain is working very well right now. Um, so I invite us to, to be able to share, to be able to, to care, to be able to um, be a blessing. Uh, but also remember that, uh, that things like this is not everyone in the whole world's everyday life. Um, not everyone can just go to the grocery store and get what they need or what they desire. Um, for a lot of people, food security is a dream. So I invite us, as we continue to live uh, in our lives, in our everyday lives, let us remember uh, the blessings that we have, but also the blessings that we have to share. Um, whether it is here in our community, in our country, or around the world. As we continue to uh, praise God, I invite us to join together as we sing, Fairest Lord Jesus.
at this time invite us to uh, take a moment ha, uh, for the Sunday school time story. And I was thinking about this this morning, and uh, all of us have questions. We all have questions no matter uh, how old are, are we are or how young we are. Sometimes we, we like to come up with the answers, and it's interesting um, how some people are, are very good at coming up with answers. Sometimes they're even right. Uh, but I think sometimes we, we get stuck on the questions. And I invite us to think about this because uh, one of the people we'll be talking about a little bit later on in the scriptures is a guy by the name of Thomas. And he's gotten the nickname over the years, Doubting Thomas. Uh, because his friends, uh, Thomas was one of the disciples who was uh, with Jesus. And uh, Thomas, when his friends told him that Jesus is risen, he says to them, you know what, I'm not going to believe it until I see Jesus, until I'm able to touch uh, his wounds, until I'm able to, to just experience, uh, to, uh, until I'm going to know uh, that I've seen him with my, my own eyes, uh, been able to feel that he's real, it's not just a ghost, it's not just a fairy tale. Um, and he, and Sometimes we look down on Thomas. But you know what? Each of us have questions. And what we can do with our questions is we can write them down on a piece of paper. Now this is a Kleenex box, uh, so if you're, you're, you need a Kleenex box, make sure it's empty first. Mom and Dad might get a little bit ticked off if you just start pulling the Kleenex out willy-nilly um, and just dumping them on the floor. But if you have an empty box, um, some piece of paper, and you can write down your questions and you can put them in the box. Uh, and, and, and parents, uh, I invite you to take the time to, to look at the questions. Because sometimes kids uh, have a question on the top of their head, sometimes you have a question. Um, and you need to write it down so you'll remember what the question is. You can put it in the box. And whether it's you who are answering it, or you can send me an email or give me a call, uh, and I might be able to help you answer it. But don't shy away from questions. Don't shy away from the doubts that we have. Because we each have doubts. And it's okay. Um, Thomas had, a doubt, had doubts. And what, did he, what, what happened there? Jesus appeared to him. So I think it's important uh, that, we, that we actually honor our questions. Because sometimes our doubts are really just questions that we have. Uh, that we want to be, that want to be answered. And we need to take that time. Um, we can decorate the box. You can put some paper, some color, some construction paper over top of it. You can take a white piece of paper and just put it around. You can even make a lid for it. Uh, but you can have those questions. Have some piece of paper that you can just put in there. Um, and honor the questions. Because you know what? Sometimes kids have the same questions adults do. And that's a good thing too. Um, but don't be afraid to ask the questions. Because that's how we learn to grow. I was uh, in karate. Um, when I f first learning something new, uh, my, my sensei asked after we do it, are there any questions? And it took me about four years to be able to understand that I need to actually have an idea of what we're doing before I can ask a question. But the questions do come. Don't be afraid of the questions. Because as I said, the questions help us learn. The questions actually help us to get to know Jesus and God better. So at this time, I invite us to, to take a moment and to pray, um, and to come before God, and, and then we're going to read through uh, the scripture that we just, kinda, we, we just talked about a little bit, and, and another scripture too. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time. We thank you for the opportunity to be able to come together as, as followers of Jesus. We're able to come together as people on, on the same path of faith, faith, but at different places on it. We thank you, Lord, that you've placed in our midst people who we can ask questions to, that are going to help us to grow in faith. Lord, we're thankful that you, you receive our questions that you don't shy away from them, you don't look down, but you actually make space for us to ask them. Lord, as we gather today, we remember uh, those who are recovering from surgery, Lord. 
We pray, Lord, that you would, you would be with each of them, that you'd strengthen their body. Uh, give them patience, Lord, to allow their bodies to heal. Lord, we pray that you'd, you'd be with, with those around them as they're caring for them, Lord. And Lord, we pray for, for those who are, are at home who are feeling lonely. Lord, help us to continue to reach out to them and to let them know that, that they're not alone, that they are in our thoughts and our prayers. Lord, for those who are, who are not able to, to get out um, that need stuff, may they have the courage to ask for help. Lord, for the people that are, are struggling right now with doubts, and there are a great number of doubts right now, as things continue to change and our roles change, help us to continue to, to encourage one another. And Lord, speak into our lives. Because we need to hear from you. Lord, we pray for, <clears throat> for our community as it continues to work together. That it continues to help out and support each other and be a blessing to each other. And Lord Jesus, we, we think about all the things that you are doing in our midst. Even in this time of, of uncertainty, in this, this exceptional time, we know that you are present. That you are in our homes, working with our families, in our hearts, helping us to grow. Your inner community is bringing us together to help out others. You are in this world, bringing healing and restoration. Lord, we pray for the many people who are grieving this morning. A grief that is going around the world. A grief that is weighing heavily on people's hearts. A grief that is a daily reality for too many people. Lord, may people have a space to grieve. A space to care, to be filled with love, to be renewed. A space to allow the fullness of your love to be lived out. <clears throat> Lord, we struggle, but we know that you are there with us. Lord, help us to have that unwavering faith. But Lord, carry us when our faith does waver. That we know that you are there, even when we struggle, even when we have our doubts, even when our fears get the best of us, we know that you are present. Lord, as we turn to your word once again, may your words guide, guide our living. May your Holy Spirit guide our reading of your word. May you bless us with, with a deeper understanding and a growing relationship with you. And Lord, be with, be with me as I share the message that you've laid on my heart this, this week. Pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning comes from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 to 31, and from... The uh, first letter of Peter, chapter 1, verses 3 and 9. <clears throat> On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were, for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. 
And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. And if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put, your, put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in the book, but, those, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. And from 1 Peter, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to his great mercy. He has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold, that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not know, now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible expressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Our title for the message today is, I Have Doubts. Um, and I don't know about you, uh, I know for myself there are times when I have doubts. I have, have doubts that of, about um, whether I'm doing uh, the right thing, or I'm be, about the purpose of my life. Uh, I have doubts about, uh, even as a parent, um, I have doubts in different things that I do. Uh, sometimes because I'm not uh, skilled at them yet. I know a lot of different things, but I'm, as I say, I'm a, a jack of all trades, but a master of none in many ways. Uh, so even in my, my own life, I have doubts. I have doubts that, uh, that I have to deal with. Uh, I believe that many of us have doubts. Uh, no matter how deep those doubts are, the question then becomes, is what do you do when you have doubts? And it's a good question because some of us, when we have those doubts, we want to ignore them. We want to just push them back and you want to come off and appear like we have great faith that we are totally with it, that we know that we are very comfortable with what we're doing, what we, with what we know, and we don't acknowledge our doubts. Uh, uh, some of us, uh, we are right up front and we admit what our doubts are. We're quite happy to say, you know what, I've got this doubt. And we're open to allowing someone else to speak into our lives. And I think there, there is the, when we're, we're hiding our doubts, uh, part of it is pride. Uh, we don't want to appear like we don't know something. Um, the reality is, is that there's a lot of, in this world that we don't know. Uh, there are people that are called experts, but they're not experts in every single thing in this world. 
Uh, when I was in high school uh, preparing for college or university, I had a very limited idea of what I could possibly do. And then I looked at a university course guide. And I was turning from page to page to page to page of things I had never thought of because I didn't know a single thing about them. I didn't even know they existed. And there was, uh, there was the suggestion a number of years ago that at the beginning of your university career, by the time you get through it, uh, everything will have changed. And that kind of struck me. Sometimes we are afraid of admitting we doubt uh, because we have questions that we're afraid uh, that it's, if we ask them, it's going to damage our pride. It's going to make us look like we're less of a person. But the reality is, none of us are experts at everything. So it's good to have those questions. The other thing is, is that sometimes I think we're afraid of uh, expressing our doubts is because someone, it opens us up that someone might try to convince us. Can might convince us that we're right, which would be really cool, but might also convince us that we're, that we're off base, which is a struggle for, for many people. Because even in our doubts, we, we believe of our rightness, and we don't want to be told that we're wrong. So there is that struggle there. But what does, but when we think about doubts, and even admitting the doubts, and opening ourselves up to admitting those doubts, who do we admit those doubts to? Do we admit them just to ourselves? Do we admit them to someone we trust? Do we admit them to God? Do we admit, why would we even think about admitting them to God? God already knows them, doesn't he? But are we willing to allow ourselves to be open to what God says or to what the other person has to say? Are we willing to be open um, to what will come from that question, from that admittance that we have doubts? Are we willing to take that journey? Because it is a journey of learning, it is a journey of growth. If we don't admit it, we can just stay at home in our comfy chair, believing what we believe. But will we allow someone to challenge us and to walk with them down a road that we're not quite sure what it will look like? Very much like the road of life that we're living. That there is uncertainty. The reality is is that we hear about both kinds of people in the Bible. Those who will hide uh, their doubts and those who will admit their doubts. In the scripture that we just read from the Gospel of John, we hear about uh, Thomas, and I mentioned him a little bit earlier. His nickname is Doubting Thomas. I think a better nickname would be Honest. Yes, he had his doubts, but he was honest about it. He didn't hide it from anyone. The disciples, the, uh, his friends, people that he had hung out with, people that he trusted, Say, you know what? Jesus appeared to him, appeared to them, and they wanted to share this good news with Thomas. But he wasn't there. And it, you have to admit that when you hear about this, when you, if you were to be told this story and you weren't there, it's a tough story to believe because Jesus appeared to the disciples. And you remember, there's two things that he made clear, both to, or one thing that he made clear both times. The doors were locked. So you're thinking, well, did Jesus just climb in through the window? Or is Jesus just a ghost? And this is going through Thomas's mind. And these are honest questions. How did Jesus get there? It just says Jesus appeared. We can hypothesize about what that means. But I want us to acknowledge that the question that Thomas is asking is a real question. It's a question that many people have today. 
It is a struggle to, to acknowledge something happened that seems impossible. And yet it happened. And Jesus, when what did Thomas do? Did he hide the stones? Did he go, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or did, and disagree with the disciples, and yet this doubt was in his heart. And he wouldn't acknowledge it, and it, he didn't, or, and it could have allowed it to grow and actually divide him further from Christ. What he did was he admitted his questions. He admitted that, you know what, I have to see. I have to actually feel. And this is, for lack of a better term, it's kind of a, a similar scientific method uh, that we follow today. I have to have, and there's some people that have to have that tangible evidence to believe. And that can be a tough thing, because when we talk about faith and belief in Christ, we don't always have that tangible evidence here. Or at least we don't think we do. Because we've discredited some of it, in, even in our own hearts. Or the world looks at the evidence that we have in ways that, you know what, eh, kind of puts doubt in people's hearts when you mention it. You know what? Other people said, no, that's not a good thing. Like when we talk about the Bible, uh, one pastor uh, talks about the Bible as each individual book. Because then you have a whole bunch of witnesses talking about God. Not just one book. Because the Bible is a collection of the combined witness of prophets, of, peop of people like Moses, of kings, of people like the, dis of, like the disciples and those who witnessed Jesus. Uh, you have the Gospels, uh, which are Matthew and John were disciples with Jesus. Luke was uh, a disciple uh, who, of Jesus who came from Paul, a friend of Paul's. Uh, Mark uh, was a, a worker uh, who came after, who heard the stories of Jesus through Peter and through Paul's experience. So you have all these combined witnesses together. It's not just one book. It's many writings with many people sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. The good news of God's continued love and, and, and intercession in history, in people's lives. So that is, that is an example of, of the evidence that we have. And then when we start using a logic about how, how our faith is formed and how the things that we hear about in the Bible happened, um, when, we, when we look at it, a lot of things, unless it is true, it doesn't make sense. Because that's not how it would have been uh, portrayed, not how it would have been done. So when we confront those doubts, as, as Thomas lays out his doubts before the disciples, but he also does it so that Christ can hear. He admits his doubts. And what does Christ do? Christ appears to him. Christ shows him the wounded hands, the wound in his side, that he's not a ghost, he's not a fairy tale, that he is real, that he is alive, and that God's love and grace is, is very present. Now we might think that when we hear how Thomas or how Jesus speaks to Thomas afterwards, you believe because you've seen. Others, blessed are those who believe and haven't seen. We sometimes think of that as sort of a, a uh, speaking down to Thomas, and yet it is just, it is an acknowledgement that there are those who need to see, and there are those who will not see, but will still believe. One faith is not better than the other. Having faith in Christ is the most important thing. 
We struggle with that. And we, sometimes we struggle with our doubts about Christ, about faith, about the church. But we can lay those struggles down before Christ and allow Christ to speak into them. If we try to hide them, what we're doing is we're not just hide, we're not hiding these doubts from God because God knows everything. We're hiding the opportunity to, con- to be confronted with Christ from ourselves. We're ignoring that Christ wants to speak into our lives. We're ignoring that Christ wants to be present in our lives. And sometimes when we, when we hide our doubts, it truly is about our pride, and it will separate us. And as I, I mentioned a few minutes ago, that if we allow those doubts to live and to fester in us, they will grow, and they will continue to separate us from Christ. But if we lay down our doubts before Christ, what did Christ do with Thomas? He say, no, you've doubted, get out. No, he appeared. He came and allowed Thomas to have, excuse me, have a deeper faith. We don't need to be afraid of our doubts. We don't need to be afraid of God looking down upon us. As God came down to us to lift us up. We're not to build, as Led Zeppelin puts it, a stairway to heaven based on our pride, because that stairway will crumble. We are being lifted up by God's faithfulness who who lifts us up into a deeper faith. And Peter, when we look at Peter, he is sharing the gift of the gospel with his people. A gift that uh, stretched for years and years, a gift that had changed his life. And he is sharing what he has witnessed, what he knows to be fact. Not just hope, but fact. And he is sharing and allowing people to believe even without seeing. That he he is sharing what he has seen with people who have not seen and experienced Christ. Jesus meets each of us, no matter where we are, no matter what we're doing, what we look like, no matter whether we've got it all together or we are a, one of my favorite terms is a puddle of goo lying on the floor. If we allow Jesus to meet us and we're honest with him, he will continue to help us. His love for us is greater than our current circumstance. His love for us is greater than our doubts or our fears or our unbelief. And here's something, one of the things is that people say, um, and I was um, struck by this question, it was from watching a movie many, many years ago. And the character in it, One of the characters said, well, I don't believe in God. And the other character says, it doesn't matter if you don't believe in God, God believes in you. And when we expand this a little bit uh, differently into our own, own world, there are seven billion some odd people in this world. How many people know you? Know of you? So there's probably a small, small portion of that that no you can then actually attest to your existence. There's probably a seven billion less the sum, less the, the small portion that doesn't know you exist, and yet you still do. I go back to that quote: "It doesn't matter if you believe in God; God believes in you." My belief in God doesn't make God more real. God's love of you changes your life. There was one story that happened. Actually, it was 
when I was in university. It happened at a camp uh, that is uh, south of Cambridge. And it's a story of uh, this young woman who was at another, I was at a university at the time, but uh, who was a Christian uh, from a, a Hindu background. And she tells a story about how her family had pretty much disowned her because she wanted to follow Christ. And she was at the lowest point in her, day, in her life and having doubts. And she had gone out of the house and she lays this out before God and sees this miraculous, colorful light display. It was lightning, but it wasn't the regular lightning, it was uh, different colors of lightning that she had never seen before. Are we willing to allow God to speak into our lives and see, this, see what God is, can do to re reassure us and to speak into our faith like this young woman did? She laid it all out before God and in, in her very sight, saw God's love being lived out. A sign from God that God was present, that he hadn't forgotten about her. Are we willing to be that honest with God, with our doubts? And be able to receive the answer, whether we like it or not? That's the other question. Because the answer to the question that we ask might actually be God leading us in a different direction. That might be God speaking into our lives and saying, you know what, you're right to doubt this. Follow me this way. We have to be open to what God will say to us. To what Jesus will say into our doubts. He may reaffirm us. He may lead us in a different direction. But either way, Christ is there with us. Even when all the doors are locked, even when the world seems to be falling apart, even when life uh, that we know it seems to be in chaos, and, and you don't think there is any grounding, Christ is our ground, Christ is there with us, Christ will lead us through. Don't be afraid of your doubts. Allow Christ to speak in to your life, to your faith. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we come before you. We do have doubts at times. And it's, there are times when we, we struggle with what is going on in our world with the sicknesses that, are, that loved ones are living through and experiencing for the, the trouble that we are, are experiencing on a number of levels, whether it's health-wise, whether it's economic, whether it's relationship, whether it is we can keep going on and on. But Lord, help us to focus on you. Lord, you know our struggles. Help us to open ourselves up that you can speak into our doubts. That you don't turn us away, that you don't deny us. But that you are there with us. That you want us to grow in faith. That you want us to continue to, to blossom into the people that you have created us to be and redeemed us to be. people are, are going into different places today, whether it's to work at a hospital or a grocery store, whether it is fixing machinery, whether it is caring for loved ones over the phone, whether it is walking into a place where there is a great deal of sickness, whether it's just going down the street. Lord, be with us and 
help us to be with you as honestly as we can be, without any hidden agendas, without any fear. Help us to truly be who we are and who you are calling us to be. We pray this in Jesus' name. My friends, I invite us to join together as we sing Be Thou My Vision. And uh, the words are a little bit different than uh, we're used to at times. Uh, there's, uh, this comes from a different, uh, I think it's called, the, it's sung to the words from Voices United. Uh, the musician and uh, singer is uh, Helena. Uh, so I invite us to listen along and sing Be Thou My Vision. And we can sing together too also. Uh, Be Thou My Vision.
like to thank you all for coming and joining together in worship this morning. May God's blessing go with you. Uh, may his light shine upon you this day, even as the clouds are raining down on us. Remember that his light is in our hearts, in our minds. His light shines and guides, lights the path before us. And for anyone who is interested, uh, I'll be setting up a Zoom chat uh, room in a few minutes. Uh, so you can uh, click on either, if you got an email, uh, it's in the email. There's also a link uh, on the Facebook page. Um, remember, you have to click on the link and you also have to input the password uh, if you want to be able to join in. Uh, so, hope to see a few, see some of you today. Uh, if not, until next week. God bless.